Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Relationship Show. I'm your host, Midori Verity, and today we are going to be talking about money and being a couple and dealing with all that stress and strain and horror that can come with dealing with finances as a couple, because today we have an expert with us. Andrea Warrock is a nationally recognized consumer and money saving expert who's passionate about helping Americans find simple saving solutions to life's many financial troubles. Her advice has been shared across hundreds of popular media outlets, and she regularly contributes to TV shows like The Today Show, Good Morning America, MSNBC, and Fox and & Friends, and she has a plethora of other accolades as well. So let's welcome her. Hello, Andrea. Thanks for being here with us. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, so we, I know that finances is such a strain for so many couples. In fact, it's the number one reason for divorce. Yes. So I, that's why I'm so excited to have you with us to help us find ways to deal with those issues in a constructive way that helps us become healthier and happier and wealthier. Yeah, so, and I think it's a, a, I think it's a good point to make that it is a number one reason. So if you or someone you know is dealing with it, you shouldn't feel embarrassed. It's something that all couples go through at one point or another in their relationship. And so just being aware that it's an issue, don't let it take over your life, but definitely take the steps to make your relationship better in that way. Good point. Good point. Because so many of us don't go get the help that we need because we are so embarrassed of right where we may be or, you know, how messed up everything is. So I think that's a good, a good point to make that you got to start somewhere and you're not the only one. And in fact, it's very, very common as she's letting us know. So tell us first a little bit about you. How did you get into this? Um, and what's your background? Right. Well, I've always been very passionate about saving money and living in a financially responsible way. I was raised this way. Uh, I deviated from this lifestyle, though. After college, I got into a lot of debt with my credit card, just living up a life in New York City, single and spending beyond my means. And then I quickly realized this is not going to work out for the long run. I figured out how to pay off my debt and how to become more financially responsible with, you know, my lifestyle. And so that's why I'm able to share my advice and have become passionate about helping everyday Americans become savvier shoppers and savers and have had the lucky opportunity to do so across national media outlets. And I write a lot of articles about it. And especially as it relates to relationships. I've been married for two years now, and I would say that our biggest issue for my husband and I was overcoming some of our financial issues. We come from two different worlds on spending, and so we've had to kind of discover in our own way how to mesh those spending profiles, those views, and how to work towards a better, you know, work towards that same path. And um, it's been, you know, a little bit of a struggle, and I've kind of want to share the tips that have worked with for me with others. That's awesome. And I'm glad to hear that you are talking about how, even though you are an expert in this, that it wasn't easy in the beginning and that you're kind of working through that because there's so many couples that I hear of that go through their whole marriage and they don't have those, an honest financial conversation, maybe just the husband or this one of the spouses is in control of the money and the other person isn't. And then it ends up in disaster. And then of course they get divorced. So it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. So yeah. It's be and, and, and I think I real, there was this one point, this one fight where I realized it was going to get worse if we didn't fix it now. And it was early on and it was a bill that came in the mail that wasn't paid. And I freaked out and my husband's really good at talking calmly and explaining why he was upset with it. And um, I realized how I needed to change my perspective, but I also needed to educate him that he was missing the education on how to be financially responsible. And so instead of pointing fingers, blaming and shouting, there's a more reasonable approach to it. Absolutely. And when you do take more of that positive approach to it, it's amazing how we get less defensive if yes. Listen. So right. let's talk about that because I know you have five tips for us 
Um, and I hope that everyone is taking notes. <laughs> Get a piece of paper and a pen and write this out or come back and listen to it again, because these are really key, key points that, that um, Andre is about to make with us. Okay, so number one is work toward a shared goal. Tell me yes. about that. So when you work towards a shared financial goal, you'll understand why you have a budget, why you're trying to save money, and you'll be less likely to deviate from it. When both people in a relationship are, say, working towards, it could be a short-term goal, short-term goal, like saving for a family vacation. It could be a long-term goal, saving for a house, saving for retirement. But when you both understand the reason for that goal and you both are passionate about it and you both commit to working towards it, it just puts you in line. You're working together. You're on the same financial path. And then you understand when you have certain boundaries when it comes to spending. So it might be one person who wants to go out to dinner all the time or the other person who wants to buy shoes. And maybe this person is always pinching every penny. But when you're working towards that shame shared goal, you'll also align your spending views and, you know, be happier doing it together. Yeah. When you can have those shared goals, that's huge. And what I teach is having the shared goals and coming up with a plan because it just makes everything so much easier. And you work as a team. Exactly. Versus, yeah. Be on your own. That's the, that's the beauty. Of and, a relationship. and you brought up something earlier when one person in the relationship deals with all the finances and the others in the dark and has no idea what's going on, that can create a lot of disconnect, especially when you have these issues that come up and then you blame each other or fight about it. Uh, it's important to loop each other in and just be aware of everything that's going on. And the person who's more financially savvy, better with numbers, it doesn't mean that you know they have to give all the responsibility away, but just you know teach each other, share 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 the information with each other, and just make you make each other aware of what's going on. And I totally agree. With, I think. It's okay to have one person who's in charge of it overall, mm -hmm. but it's important to have the conversations so that one person is feeling like one person's totally in control of it, that you're both sharing in that. That's so important, regardless of whether it's money or kids or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but it's an important message um, so that you both feel connected and, and recognized. Right. And that's why... My second tip is talking about planning money dates. So, you know, talking about money doesn't have to be boring. You can make it a little bit more romantic by planning a dinner date where you set aside time to discuss your money. And this is a great time to loop in the spouse or the other person in the relationship who doesn't understand what's been going on maybe the last few months or the last month uh, with your finances or just, you know, remind them of what we're working towards in terms of savings goals or keep them up to speed on the retirement savings. Um, but these money dates are also important because if you have any issues that have been building up, this is a good time to discuss it in a neutral position where you're not talking about something in the heat of the moment. You know, if you blow up because you get upset about a money issue or something that someone bought um, that they shouldn't have bought or ha shouldn't have spent that much money. If you blow up in the heat of the moment, that's when you're going to get into these really big fights. And that's what's going to escalate into bigger issues and possibly lead to break up over time. So these money dates are just a good time to reserve all those money talks, bring up any issues you have, but you're calmer. You've had time to think about it. And each of you then has a, a time to speak about what's bothering them or what they're excited about. Agreed. Yeah, that's awesome. I always like to do those over a glass of wine. Yes. <laughs> wine is always good too. Dessert. I wouldn't mind some dessert too. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Just to kind of make it a little bit more festive. Yes. Or relaxed. Right. Okay. And then number three is set spending rules. Yeah. Ugh. So 
<laughs> Some people might not like this tip, but you know, it all depends on your budget. Having a spending rule in place just ensures that you respect each other, that you respect your savings goal and that shared goal that you're working towards. And it could be any, it could be a hundred dollars. It could be 200, depending on what budget you guys have set in place in your financial position. But the spending rule means that anytime you're considering buying something at a hundred or over $200, that you discuss it with your partner. You ask them what they think so that they can help you make a smarter decision because your money is their money and your finances together are you know, both of your decisions how you use it. Now, of course, uh, anything below that amount, then you should you know, feel free to make that decision on your own. But, you know, just if you're, if you find yourself hiding purchases in the back of your car or in your closet, then that's a real issue and you guys need to really talk about it. Okay. So what if I am at Nordstrom's and they are having an amazing sale on <laughs> this purse that I have wanted for so long? It's, let's say it's 75% off, but it's over what we agreed upon, but it's going to be gone if I don't get it right now. Any suggestions there? You know, that, <laughs> first of all, what might have been a good idea is in previous money dates, just talk about some of the things that are maybe on your want list and make sure that you kind of get that pre-approval perhaps. But we have cell phones, you could text, you could call in an instant to verify that that purchase is okay. And I promise you, your partner will appreciate that you even took the moment to ask them. The chances are they won't say no. And if they do say no, there's probably a really good reason. Maybe there is some debt issues that you guys are dealing with or you're really close to reaching that goal to get your family away to the beach. And so it's important to certainly talk it over and make sure that you're not overspending and wasting money that could be used towards something more important. I think it's called that respect level, right? Yes, it's yeah. respect. And yeah, it's necessary for happiness in your relationship. Totally agree. Totally agree. Okay. So the next one is don't ignore debt. Yeah. And so this one's um, probably more for a couple that's starting out. Uh, you know, hopefully when you're in your relationship and you're married for a few years, you're both already aware of what your debt issues are. Of course, we hear that some people just don't share it, but it's an issue that needs to be talked about early. In fact, talking about money and your finances is something that should happen early on in a relationship. From when your relationship, I would say, when it goes from casual to committed and you're delaying making any important life decisions like maybe taking a new job or moving into a certain apartment, uh, that's when you really need to have the money talk with your loved one, um, even before you get married. And discussing debt is awkward, but it's necessary because when you do get married, you do take on each other's debts and you can help each other get out of debt. And it's easier to do with someone there by your side. So don't ignore it. Talk about it. Uh, some things that you can do are look up your credit scores. There are sites like mylendingtree.com where you can enter in your information, get updates on your credit score. And they'll also give you information about how you can get out of debt faster and save more money. It might be through consolidating your debts. You know, or you might even find that it's better to work with a financial advisor by having this third-party person involved who kind of gives you these tips. Then you don't feel like at each other, that you don't feel like either of you are pointing fingers or trying to be bossy or taking over responsibility. And so sometimes working with a financial advisor or planner does help couples reach those financial goals, get out of debt faster and not fight about it as much. Okay. So I want to ask you some questions on that. Sure. So finding a financial advisor that's good for you. I know that there's so many different types of financial advisors. There's some who sell their own products Right. And there's some that are really big in, um, in what is it? Whole, whole life insurance, you know, just different things. And some of them might not be the right fit for you. Right. But if you're not educated on investing and in insurance and all that type of stuff, you don't know. Right. And so tell us a little, give us some, some guidelines there. 
When it comes to us, you want to first of all make sure that you have a certified financial planner. What I like to recommend is asking friends and family if they've worked with anyone whom they can recommend to you. Referrals are the best option, I believe. Um, you know, because you, you want someone who's trusted, who's going to respect your money and really help you figure out the best plan suited towards you. Um, then also, there are a lot of planners offered through the banks that you might work with. So that's an option as well. Um, there are also fee-based certified financial planners or those who take commission. So if you're just starting out and really not sure of what your financial portfolio is going to be or how much money you're going to invest, those fee-based planners are a great option because you just kind of pay one time and then kind of work from there. Right. So let's say you've been married, let's say you're 50 years old and you've never had a financial planner. You might have some money put away in your 401k or your, um, your SEP IRA, depending on if you're self-employed or not, is it too late to go see a financial planner at that point? It is never too late. There are different investment strategies to speed up savings plans for your retirement date. And they might be simply reallocating your funds to help you find those that are most suited for you. You might even have a 401k from an employer from 20 years ago that you never touched. And those could just be in the wrong funds. They could be too aggressive. You might be losing money by the time you retire. And so that planner will help you just fine tune everything that you've done up until this point and make sure that you're still on pace and give you guidance on what else you could be doing to reach your target retirement if you're off pace right now. Okay. Wow. This is great information. <laughs> great information. Well, thank so you. Any, any last things that we should be aware of or any last tips for our audience? Yeah, I would say kind of just reiterating some of the topics that we talked about, but keep in mind that your relationship, it comes to commitment honesty, and respect. So commit to working together on all of your issues, including your financial issues. And so if you're the spender, figure out ways how you can save better. And if you're the one who's pinching every penny, figure out how to loosen your strings a little bit more and you know, go out to dinner once in a while. You got to both make compromises to make each other happy. Um, but respect each other in the end and don't blow up. If you get really angry, walk away from the situation, roll your eyes behind the other person's back if you need to, and then just talk about it calmly. And that's a better way to figure out your resolution. Absolutely agree. Although my husband tells me he can, he can really see <laughs> my eyes. Yeah. No matter where he is, he's like a mom. It's weird. Yeah. I sometimes think that I can get away with talking under my breath and then all of a sudden he'll storm back in. What did you say? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fantastic and so, so, so important. So I do hope that everyone did take those notes and they really take it to heart because this is a huge issue and you can't be scared of it. You got to just jump in. I always talk about pushing through that fear, that fear base, and you just have to, and you have to deal with it. And once you start doing it, it gets easier. It gets yeah. easier and it's fun to grow and feel that you're working together on a longer term goal and that you guys are working on it together. So exactly. Yeah. So anyway, thank you so much, but how can we find out more about you? Where can we go? Yeah, of course. Well, I share a lot of my tips and articles and uh, videos as well on my site at andreawarrock.com. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, really simple. Andrea Warrock, you can find me there. And if you have any questions, I even have people who watch me on TV or who have read an article and they'll post a comment or send me an email and I'll like, be able to share some answers with them that way as well. Awesome. And then of course, like always, if you didn't get that down or if you aren't quite sure about how to spell her name, just go to our website, midoriverity.com, and we have all of her information as well as her really cool blog posts about all of this so you can get even more in depth um, on, on the topics that she talked about. So I encourage you to do that. And once again, thank you so much for all your great insight and information. And I know that all these people that are watching are getting help. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'll hopefully talk to you soon.